स्मिता शालिनी शाल वी स्टार्ट आई थिंक वी हैव ऑल द पार्टनर्स ऑल्सो हियर फ्रॉम वी एन आई टी अन्ना यूनिवर्सिटी ऑल द पार्टनर्स आर एन राइट सो सिटी आई थिंक वी कैन गेट स्टार्टेड यू कैन अनम्यूट यूर सेल्फ यस ओके सो हेलो एवरी वन वेलकम सो वी वेलकम यू ऑल वेंचर सेंटर एज बी आई जी पार्टनर वी आर हैप्पी टू ऑर्गेनाइज अवेरनेस सेशन फॉर द ट्वेंटी फोर्थ बी आई जी कॉल विथ आर कोलेबरेटिंग पार्टनर्स बी एस सी बायोनेस बायो इनक्यूमेटर फरीदाबाद विश्वेश्वर नेशनल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी आई आई टी गुवाहाटी बायोनेस बायो इनक्यूबेशन सेंटर आई सी टी नाइस आई सी टी मुंबई ई युवा सेंटर यूनिवर्सिटी इनोवेशन क्लस्टर अन्ना यूनिवर्सिटी एंड अटल इनक्यूबेशन सेंटर ज्योति इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी फाउंडेशन वेलकम अगेन टू द नोमो सीरीज अंडरस्टैंडिंग बैराक्स पी आई जी स्कीम आई जस्ट इंट्रोड्यूस द स्पीकर्स द फर्स्ट स्पीकर फॉर टूडे इज डॉक्टर शालिनी सिंह शी विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट द अंडरस्टैंडिंग द बायोटेक इग्निशन ग्रांड स्कीम Dr Shalini Singh holds a PhD degree in chemistry from University of Pune and she has done her postdoc training from RMIT University Melbourne she has 5 plus 6 years of research experience including work on synthesis and characterization of uh, semiconductor nanomaterials various applications in the field of opto electronic devices and bio labeling she is currently a specialist in the funding programs at venture center and is actively involved in the big program management through program promotion creating awareness of science entrepreneurship managing screening review of proposals due diligence contract management project monitoring mentoring of grantees and stakeholder relationship and she is also actively involved in developing the funding database for venture center she will be talking about the biotech ignition grant scheme followed by that uh, the next speaker for today is dr smita kale she is an advisor for bio incubation center at venture center dr smita kale will share tips for writing a winning grant application uh, dr smita is currently working as an advisor in the bio incubation center at venture center she is leading the center for biopharma analysis and the virax regional bio innovation center and she is actively engaged in mentoring incubators infrastructure and facility creation and development of innovation ecosystem earlier she worked as an assistant professor at sihagad college of pharmacy and she is a phd in pharmaceutical chemistry from institute of chemical technology mumbai and she has uh, academic experience of 12 plus years which includes research experience of 3 plus years so so with that we begin with the first speaker so over to you dr shalini yeah thank you siddhi for this introduction and welcome all the participants today for this talk um, can you just give me sharing rights so that i can share my screen yes you can share your screen now yeah thank you yeah is my screen visible yes it is yes uh, so as you all know the call is open currently and it will be open till 31st may uh, till evening 5:30 pm so please stick to the deadline and if possible try and submit your application uh, one or two days prior to avoid any technical glitches in the portal So let us move ahead. Uh, so under Ministry of Science and Technology comes uh, Department of Biotechnology, uh, which has led non-for-profit company in March 2012 that we all know as Biotechnology Industry Research Assistant Council. Uh, now Biotech has various funding scheme. Today one such scheme will be covering is Biotechnology Ignition Grant. so what was the purpose for this grant uh, mainly it was uh, if anybody uh, or any innovator is having uh, any idea and wants to develop a proof of concept or establish that proof of concept he wants to upscale or validate the proof of concept or he wants to get that idea to the market then uh, this grant is 
available for 50 lakhs and for a period of 18 months. The grant is available for both startups as well as individual. So the scope of and the highlights of this grant, as I mentioned, it is grant in aid and the royalty and tech transfer clauses have been recently added. That is from call 16. Uh, you get to have mentoring, advisory and referral support by the big partners. You benefit from the visibility and networking events which are organized uh, frequently by the BIRAC as well as the big partners. Also, you get the opportunity for your ideas to be evaluated by the experts who are going to um, you know, review your proposal uh, when you are in your TEP stage or at the uh, online round. Now, uh, the scope. So if you have anything uh, which needs to be de-risk, I mean the technology needs uh, de-risking or there is a data you want to demonstrate to investors or as I mentioned, if you have an idea which uh, has commercialization potential, uh, you want to validate your proof of concept, then this is all supported under BIC. Whereas if you just want to fund your PhD or you want to do plain academic research or there is a new plan for any novelty or any um, product or service coming into the market or it is involving lot many clinical trials, then this is not supported under PIC. So these are the broad domains which are supported. So healthcare, industrial products, agricultures and in others you have uh, bioinformatics, analytical methods, etc. So these broad domains are further divided into theme and sub-theme categories. So if you see, healthcare is divided into diagnostic drugs and devices, which are further divided to sub-themes like, for example, diagnostic has human, animals, plant or soil. Similarly, agriculture is divided into secondary agriculture, fisheries, poultry, animal husbandry, then industrial biotech has waste management, bioenergy, biofuels, clean energy, in addition to the AI, ML or IoT automation, uh, if you have any idea. So any ideas which is falling under these theme or sub-theme cat category are supported under BIG. And also it becomes very important that you choose the right theme as sub-theme because based on that, the experts will be assigned for your uh, proposal. So, uh, so it is important that you have chosen the right theme and sub-theme so that it goes to the correct expert to evaluate further. So uh, for this round, especially there has been a co-funding opportunities for startups which are in the domain of infectious diseases and digital health. So the areas supported are, as you can see, towards your right, it is tuberculosis, uh, vector bone diseases, uh, then digital platform technologies, antimicrobial resistance and climate health. So if you have any idea under these areas, there is a co-funding opportunities, uh, which is by BIRAC uh, plus India Health Fund. And uh, this, whatever funds are there, uh, apart from BIG funding, there will be upper funding by the Indian Health Fund. Uh, now coming to the process, sorry. Yeah, the process flow. So as we know that the call open twice a year. So once the call closes, first round is your eligibility round. So there will be a legal eligibility check done for your company uh, if you have applied as a company or if you have applied as an individual. Once you clear that, there will be a technical eligibility done where uh, your themes, sub-themes will be checked whether it is falling under the um, uh, sub whatever guidelines are given as per BIRAC for this BIG. Uh, once you clear that, there is a next round that is online review round. So based on your, as I mentioned, theme and sub-theme, the experts will be assigned, five experts will be assigned to your proposal. They will review your proposal and they'll score you. Now BIRAC will decide the cutoff and uh, if you fall above the cutoff, you move on to the next round that is the thematic technical evaluation panel where you will meet uh, the expert face to face first time and you will do a presentation in front of them uh, and based on that they will again score you and then there will be a final round uh, by BIRAC where they will decide the final cutoff and the uh, number of proposal they want to support in that particular call. So once you are selected for this grant there is a due diligence conducted by the partner followed by agreement signing and release of the funds. So this process from call opening till your final decision takes around uh, 
four to five months of time, whereas the other part that is the due diligence and signing and release of funds uh, is done within two months. So uh, talk, coming to the eligibility, so as you have seen that the first round is the legal eligibility. So I'll just mention the brief, uh, in brief what is required uh, for the startups. So you, uh, for startups, the company has to be uh, under five years old. There has to be a, a identified project leader uh, who should be a shareholder in the company. He should have completed his basic graduation in any discipline. Company can have their own R&D uh, lab or they can be associated uh, with an incubator. And also that minimum 51% of the capital has to be owned by resident Indian citizen. Whereas if you're applying as an individual, then you have to be an Indian citizen. For uh, individuals, it is mandatory. They get incubated and they must have completed their basic graduation, which could be in any discipline. And if you have, uh, if you're coming from a non-for-profit um, organization, then you have to make sure that you have the policies uh, laid for that, uh, for faculty spin-off. Uh, yeah. So uh, when we say that the experts score you and there, there's a cutoff and based on that, you move on to the next round. So what are those evaluation criteria? So first one is the unmet need or the novelty uh, in your idea that you're proposing or the difference from the existing solution you're showing carries 20 marks. The overall your business plan uh, or your commercialization potential carries 15 marks. The value proposition carries 20 marks and technical viability carries the maximum marks, that is 30 marks. Uh, then team strength uh, carries 15 marks, and some marks are also allocated if you have any challenges in your proposal with respect to IP or regulatory, then what strategy you're showing to overcome those. And overall, your plan of execution of this project in the given timeline and with the given funds. So this is the success rate table uh, where you can see the application received across uh, country or uh, to all the partners have been increasing uh, from each call. So we have been partner uh, for this scheme from call four onwards. And if you see in principle, approval received uh, is very less compared to the number of applications. So the scheme is very competitive. So uh, we request you to take up the mentoring sessions we are having and also the next session by my colleague Smita will be really helpful to understand what exactly you need to have in those technical sections. So the impact of Venture Center as big partner, uh, uh, we can see that we have received more than 1,000 applications. Uh, we have done a 200 plus awareness talk till now and there have been 800 plus applicants mentored and uh, 130 projects have been supported out of which uh, there were individuals and now there are 100 plus new startups they have formed out of which 35 are women founders and these startups have generated 800 plus employment. So um, these startups have also uh, raised uh, 300 plus follow-on funding and 200 plus IP has been filed by them and 100 plus product are in the market. So success stories, let me just give you an example of one of the PhD students who applied for BIG. And later on, they formed the company as KB Calls and their idea was to make a sustainable non a natural uh, bio pigments. Um, so they have raised further follow on funding now from other investors like Gerate and Exiler. And they have also uh, their manufacturing facility, which is of 2000 square feet. And last year, the color palettes uh, were also showcased at Lakme Fashion Week. So that is some of the success of uh, one of the grantees after BIG. And another one is of BioPrime Agri Solutions who are discovering molecules and microbes that help uh, make crop uh, climate resilient. Um, they uh, So they're, um, they were also featured in the uh, social media for raising um, nine CR and pre-series A round by Inflexor Ventures. And uh, they were also invited uh, in the conference organized by Viva Tech Paris to showcase their product. These are some of our grantees who have got some uh, visibility by appearing on the Shark Tank uh, 
episodes. So last year we had seen Pad Care, uh, you know, impressing all the sharks and getting the blank check. Then in this uh, latest uh, 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 latest season, we have seen Pragmatic Healthcare and Silifarm Technologies uh, coming up and, uh, you know, getting some investment from the sharks. So, uh, yeah, these are some of the products of other grantees uh, under various themes of uh, BIG, which we have seen that are coming into the market. And these uh, are team uh, where I and Pallavi and Siddhi take care of the project management of BIG. Mentoring is taken care by Dr. Premnath and Dr. Smita. And financial management is taken care by Dr. Manisha and Shruti. So I thank you all for your kind attention. If you have any queries regarding your theme, sub-theme, what to choose, whether that fits into uh, that uh, particular theme, or you have any questions regarding eligibility or even the technical part, you can feel free to connect with us. Um, also, I had one more slide where we have some upcoming sessions. Uh, one is the grant writing proposal workshop, which we are organizing from 9th to 11th May. So if anybody is Pune or even outside uh, willing to attend this three-day workshop to benefit for their proposal writing, please come and do that. You can register uh, and um, attend this workshop. And the other event which we are organizing is on 10th May from 4 to 5. Uh, this will be on our grantees, which we just saw, the three grantees. They will be talking about their experience, BIG experience, and also the experience on Shark Tank. Yeah, thank you all. And do connect with our social media handle. Over to you, Siddhi. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Shalini. Uh, request to all the collaborating partners to please uh, search on your video so that we can take a quick picture. Also, from among the participants, if anyone has any questions, please uh, type them in the chat box so you can also unmute and ask the question. Hello. Can I ask a question? Yes, yes, Dr. Hello. Yeah, uh, is it only one project we can apply at one time or can we apply multiple projects? See, only one project will be supported at the end. So, and it is also preferred to apply with one idea. Okay, no, we got some better two, three options. Then uh, it's not for that we can apply two, three options and the one which... No, you, you, uh, no. No, only one will be funded, so they will ask you to prioritize between the two, three options. So if you say, oh. uh, supposingly you prefer A, then rest of them uh, automatically will be rejected in the eligibility round. Okay. Can we take a picture now? Yeah, just I'll just take a screenshot. Can, can you show the contact uh, slide again, please? Just a minute. Huh? We'll just take a yes. picture and we'll just put it up. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Just one more. Thank you. Okay, thanks. For yes. applying the grants, you are giving the guidelines, no? Once the person is incubated. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. We can hear you. So, you can... some of the points, we are not able to understand what exactly has to be written. So, that will be clarified during the personal interviews of those persons. I did not get your question for what uh, you yeah. said. Uh, for applying the grant, once we have yeah. incubated, you are giving us the guidelines how to write the projects, right? It is it is a program, uh, Ignition program, which we uh, have a deep mentoring sessions where we yeah. help you to prepare with your pitch deck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think part. Smita will... Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, Dr. Rathwa, you are already part of our Ignition program. We have had one session and yeah. I think my talk will again be on that only that uh, I'll be uh, providing the insights to how to write a successful grant. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. the slides have been the... provided to me. That's yeah. what I'm talking. But uh, what has happened, no? some of the points I'm not getting only what has to be written and all those things. So you'll be uh, mentoring me that during my personal interview, yes. right? Yes. Okay, that's what that's what. Okay. Yeah. okay, so uh, rest of the questions, we'll take it after the second talk. Right now, we move on with the second speaker, Dr. Smita Kale. Okay, and can she you, will be... 
Uh, can you just put the contact page again? So before we yes, yes, we share the yeah. contact details yeah. in the chat box. Okay. Yeah, Thank we you. are doing that. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Dr. Smita Kali will be sharing tips for writing winning, winning grant application. Over to you, Dr. Smita. Yeah, Siddhi, can you see my screen full screen? Yes, yes, we can see your screen. Okay. Sorry, there's some issue with my camera. I will not be able to switch it off. It's not working. Fine. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so Shalini has told you about the BIG grant, what is supported, what is not supported. And she also showed you a table at the end uh, showing the success rate, right? So we all understand it's a very competitive grant. There are many applicants who apply and very few get it. So therefore, we are here to help you understand that how can you make it more competitive and be successful in getting this grant. So when we are preparing this proposal document, before we actually start doing that, our recommendation is to please read the scheme document or the guidelines or RFP carefully, understand what the funding agency is looking for. Like she explained you, like what is supported, what is not supported, what are the different domains, what areas of research have been supported earlier or what kind of projects have been supported. So do a little R&D on the funding agency also to understand what exactly they are looking for, which will be supported through this grant. So this is a document which we are preparing to seek funds, uh, manpower with the right skills to carry out the work, space, some lab space, infrastructure space, buy some equipment to carry out the work and other miscellaneous um, you know, activities. So while we are preparing this document, we have to make sure that this looks more like a marketing document rather than a research project. Because BIG is supporting projects which have commercialization potential. So we have to make sure that the research, whatever we are carrying out, will finally lead to a product, a process, a technology development, which can be licensed or a service. So we should be clear about that pathway. So we are trying to sell our dream to the funding agency and asking them to support us in this journey. So make sure the document is well written and is not merely a research project kind of thing where we do some initial research and then we don't know how to take it further to the market. So when I say do some R&D on the funding agency, try to understand what are they asking, what are their key questions. So they would like to know what is the goal? What do you want to achieve with the money you are asking from the funding agency? Are you really passionate about it? So if you are really passionate about it, you will spend enough time to add details, facts, to make your proposal more convincing and easier for the reviewers. What kind of methodology you're going to use, execution methodology or work plan to carry out that work. So whether it is scientifically correct, it is in the correct sequence, the way it has to be done, uh, acceptable by the scientific fraternity, so all that will also be checked. So that will tell us how serious you are. So your plan will definitely convey that seriousness if it is really in details and in the right way. Then why you? Why should you be supported? What is your credibility? You, in the sense, your team. So who is doing it? So what is their earlier track record? Have they done some kind of preliminary work which might have been already published by the team? So what are the strengths and weaknesses? Is there a resonance between what you are asking and what we want to support? So are those areas of research or domains, you know, like you saw that there is additional funding for some of the uh, diseases and domains uh, in this call by BIG. So if you are working in those areas, then please highlight that. So what are the anticipated questions by the funding agency? And have you actually uh, included those answers in your application, okay? Making it easier for them. Finally, the resource needs. 
So this BIG grant is a 50 lakhs grant over a period of 18 months. So whenever you're writing the scope, the plan, make sure that whatever can be actually completed in 18 months as per the signs and in 50 lakhs budget, only that forms your scope of the project. It cannot be from, you know, uh, TRL 1 to TRL 8, you may not be able to achieve only with this one grant. So be very realistic here. So I mentioned TRL. So let's understand what is TRL. TRL is technology readiness level. So this is uh, the NASA definition for TRL levels. So TRL 1 means when you have a concept, a principle, okay, an idea with you, you are at TRL 1. So BIG does support TRL 1 at idea stage also. Once you start working on that idea and you actually perform a set of experiments or activities to check whether it really works, okay? So that is called as developing proof of concept. So if you have some proof of concept, then we say that you are at TRL2. Further, you repeat your experiments, do some more characterization activities to check the performance. You progress in this TRL ladder from TRL2 to TRL3. Further, as we repeat, that's called validation. So we validate our proof of concept or we actually make a prototype of the product and check it for its performance. So that's again validation. So as we carry out these different experiments, you know, the D, we are more sure, confident that the technology will work. So that's called de-risking the technology. And that de-risking as it goes on, we move ahead in the TRL levels. Then somewhere we go for regulatory approvals, get the kind of licenses, certifications which are required, and finally we reach the market. So that's explanation of TRL level. So if you are at TRL, between TRL 1 to 3, you can apply for BIG. Now let's understand the different components or sections which are there in your BIG mm -hmm. application. So here on the left-hand side, you can see that these will be the different sections, okay? And one by one, we'll try to understand each one of them. So first you start uh, with a summary. So when you're writing a proposal summary, please keep it in mind that uh, this might appear as a just, you know, 200 to 300 words paragraph, but this small paragraph is actually trying to tell your whole big story to the reviewer who will read this first and it's going to create a big picture. So try to include one sentence of all these sections in your summary. That means try to explain them why you want to do it, how you are different, what is the opportunity and you know briefly in a sentence what all will be the scope, what will be developed and if it is already patented, so then you say it is a patented technology, it's proprietary or to be patented or can be patented, okay? So try to include all that information in the summary. Then there is an option to upload a concept note. So here you can upload a document where you get uh, a chance to actually include some of the figures, diagrams, flowcharts, images from some of your preliminary work uh, which you can include here because otherwise all these sections are part of an online application where you don't have the scope to, uh, you know, add images and all. So this concept note, uh, you can have a graphical abstract like we have and then some of the key results of if you have already performed some experiments or from literature uh, to help the reviewer understand your technology better, please include that as a word file and then convert it into PDF and upload it over here. Next, there'll be question on objectives and proposed approach. So what are your objectives? What do you want to achieve? So as we all know, the objectives have to be smart. So it has to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. So that is true for BIG also. And there you will also have to explain the methodology of work. What is the scope clearly need to define. So we'll come back to that in later slide. And then how will you do the ana data analysis? How much data will be collected? What would be the sample size? So a little bit of your work plan will be covered over here. 
So here we are trying to build a storyline. As I said, this is not a research pr proposal, but it's more like a marketing document. And uh, because, see, once you get this grant, you will be incorporating a company. As a startup, you'll be taking this technology development ahead. So we need to build a storyline as if we are trying to tell it to an investor. So you might use some of these sentences, which could be the opening sentences of each of your slides. And when we put them together, a story gets created. So it could be that this is an unmet need, which if solved will have enormous impact on or how that is something you can explain. The solution lies in, okay, developing say X, Y, Z, and then you explain. People have tried it in this, this, this way, but there are still these shortcomings, okay, which you are trying to overcome with your solution. We propose to do this maybe in this way, which will be different from what has been done in the past. Then this is the methodology we plan to follow. So your method methodology might be really different the way you're trying to do it. We have reasons to believe that we can be successful because maybe because of your credentials or your team strength, uh, how uniquely you're positioned uh, with respect to maybe the earlier work done, uh, your team, your skill sets background, all these are the different ways of building your storyline. I told you all that summary is a very important uh, section of your proposal. Similarly, the title is also equally important. Kindly keep the title very brief, crisp, concise, and clear. Your title and summary, the abstract, will help us route your application to the right reviewer. Okay, that will help us understand that actually this falls under which domain and then who should be the right reviewer for this application. So please work on that title. Okay, that's the first thing they're going to read. So try to make it very interesting and impressive for the reviewers, as well as try to include all the keywords, okay, uh, which will help us root it to the right reviewers. You can also include a clear definition of the proof of concept you're trying to develop. So you can say that, to demonstrate proof of concept for a whatever is your product, okay? Maybe a point of care diagnostic device for diabetes. So for uh, diabetic patients uh, to be used by whom and how they will benefit maybe for accurate and fast results. So try to define that proof of concept which you're developing or validating. Next important section is the rationale behind the work. Why are you doing it? What is the problem you're trying to solve? So what is that unmet need? So while you're explaining this part, uh, you might try to look at how this is being dealt currently. So currently also there might be some solutions available, some standard methods, gold standards, but what are the shortcomings with the available solutions? So try to highlight that. So for example, here to explain you all, if we take example of a point of care diagnostic for diabetes, which we are developing and we are applying for BIG, in that case, I will not talk about here when I'm explaining the problem, I'll not spend time explaining what is diabetes, how is its prevalence. I will uh, maybe just you know keep it to one sentence and then talk more about how it is being diagnosed currently. Are there any point of care solutions? If there are, then what are the problems associated, which we want to overcome with our proposed solution? So what is my proposed solution? So clearly I'm saying it's a product. So I'm building a product, which might look something like this. So try to include an image, visual representation helps in understanding better. So this image helps us understand that this is the point of care diagnostic device which we are developing to measure the blood glucose levels at home. So person can just prick the uh, finger with Lancet, place a blood drop on the strip, which will also be provided with the uh, device here and place it in the device and you can see the glucose reading. Okay. So that tells me that I might have to buy the device one time, pay for it one time, but I'll have to keep buying the strips from the same company uh, again and again to be used. So here, when I am explaining my product for the first time to the reviewers, I will might I might include some images. 
and I will list some key value features which are simple, which are not that technical. Okay, simple to understand that what are the key features, how the product will look like and be used. In this next slide, I will talk about the details of technology. That what is the underlying technology behind my proposed product or solution. So by technology in this example, I mean, I might like to tell them that what is there inside that device, which is responsible for detecting glucose levels accurately. So what is that biomarker, which is responsible for detecting glucose? Or what are the sensors inside? Uh, you know, so are these the best sensors or uh, the biomarker itself is so sensitive because of which I might have some uh, advantages over my competitors. So that technology part I'll explain over here. Next comes novelty and differentiation. So while we are talking about novelty, uh, what we are trying to tell is whether I will be able to protect it using any intellectual property. It could be patent, it could be copyright, it could be uh, trademarks, uh, you know, any uh, of these IPs. So when I am explaining novelty, kindly do not use the words or these statements like because it is cost effective, point of care, user friendly, it is novel. No, these are some of the key features which we can list when we are explaining the product for the first time. But when we are talking about novelty, if you have already filed a patent, please include the patent number and maybe a few of your claims or you uh, we always prepare an abstract for the patent. So where we have some technical claims there, okay? Where technically we explain why it is novel. What is the novelty, the novel patentable features? Try to explain and elaborate those. Next, to bring out the novelty more, you can differentiate it against the competitors who are already there in the market. So this is a simple uh, example of a table which can be used to make a competitive landscape where you will identify your competitors. They could be from India or abroad. So you will write the product name, company name, and the country of origin. And your technology, please keep it uh, in the first column. Then please identify some parameters against which we will be comparing. So these are the parameters because of which maybe it will be technically more stronger or uh, you know, customer will be really willing to buy this because it could be uh, the driving force could be the selling price or the ease of use or its accuracy, sensitivity, or it takes less time. Uh, it is uh, maybe it is non-invasive compared to other ones which could be invasive. So try to identify those key parameters against which you will be comparing. And while you do that, doing the comparison, uh, you know, here you see some color coding. So try to use quantitative terms wherever you have the values available with you. For example, here, the same device, if I am sure that whatever I am developing will be able to detect blood glucose in 30 minutes, but by standard methods, maybe it is taking two hours, eight hours, six hours. So I know that I am better than my competitor. So I highlight myself in green and the competitors in red. So wherever you have semi-quantitative, quantitative, uh, facts, data available with you, try to include those in the comparison table. Do not use words like, you know, this takes less time, this takes, uh, this is faster, this is high, this is low. No, these are very subjective. You can uh, at least use 2x, 3x if you don't have the exact numbers or approximately the symbol can be used if you don't have the uh, accurate value there. Next, what is the opportunity? Why are you trying to do this and what impact it will have maybe on society, on the market, overall economic impact for the country? So please explain this again with facts, data, some numbers. You can refer to some standard uh, references. Uh, if it is related to healthcare, then maybe NIH, WHO, ICMR, AIMS data, or you know, look at some uh, peer reviewed journals and please include that data here. Now that we know the opportunity, uh, we should also be aware of the challenges which we might face or the risk factors. Identifying risks at an early stage really helps. 
so that we are prepared to face them. We have a strategy to mitigate them later when we actually face them. Now, these challenges or risks could be related to maybe scalability or environmental hazards associated uh, or uh, no economic viability. It is costing us more or there's a lot of dependability uh, on import of some of the key components. So these could be the different challenges. So we need to identify them and uh, then we need to actually have a plan that if these are the challenges, then do we have a plan B? If we really, you know, this becomes a hurdle, then we are prepared with a plan B to further develop this technology in this, this, this way. Very important section is if you have done any preliminary work, then talking about it, including the status. So we have our next slide elaborating that. Proposed end outcome. So whether you're making a product, service, or technology, clearly you need to select one of them or it could be a product plus service also. So now talking about the current status, preliminary, preliminary work done. So as we are discussing that this is a very competitive grant and many people are applying. So if you have already done some work, establish the proof of concept, please include that data, the results, because those indicate, give the confidence to the reviewers that you know how to do it. It is doable. It is technically feasible, possible. And uh, the data will also hint at, you know, how... Uh, accurate it is or successful it is. If you have already published, uh, please uh, include the publication data here. If you have a prototype ready, include the image of that raw prototype. So that's your current status. So based on what work, how much work you have done, you will uh, mention the current TRL you are at. Then there'll be a scope of project, scope of BIG. So you might say that you will validate the proof of concept further and you might uh, start applying for regulatory submissions or you might start doing the clinical validation. So whatever it is, mention that scope of project and finally the end goal and the expected TRLs at what stage you will reach. Then comes future plan of commercialization. So we are clear that we may not be able to reach market with BIG, right? We might uh, move from say TRL2 to TRL4 or maybe TRL5. But what after that? Do we know the path? So there is this uh, slide in our template where you can, you know, with a simple one slide, timeline slide, you can tell the further pathway that by the end of BIG, for example, if you are reaching this stage where you have validated prototype ready, then what are the next steps? So will you be doing extended validation, more field trials? Uh, with whom you would collaborate or uh, how will you raise further money? It could be CIBRI, BIPP from BIRAC or seed funding from incubators or maybe angel investors or uh, private equity. Next could be regulatory approvals. Once you get those, setting up the manufacturing unit, or doing marketing and finally reaching the market. So how long each one of them are going to take? You might take three years, two years, five years, 10 years, depending upon the domain you're working in. So please have this slide ready, which tells that you know what will be the further steps and you are ready for them. Next important part here uh, was after the commercialization strategy, the business model. So do you know who is your final customer and end consumer? Sometimes these two might be different. Okay, so your end consumer may be a patient, but the hospital might buy it and then the patient is going to use it. So what is your final offering, whether it's a product, product plus service or a technology which you are going to license. So one needs to have a good clarity that whatever research we are doing right now, finally, it will lead to what kind of product or pro um, offering for the customer. Okay, as a business. So when it is a business then we need to have a model that how will we actually raise revenue or get revenue from that business, okay? So for that, please look at some of the examples from national and international startups, how they have raised, how their regulatory pathway was, uh, you know, look at their journey and learn from them. 
what is the estimated cost price selling price at big stage this will be really really approximate because as you move on later in the technology development based on the volumes and uh, uh, marketing costs uh, it really changes a lot so with business model what else would be uh, required is what is your go to market strategy so how will you reach your potential customers it could be through digital marketing it could be through conferences one on one meetings with the key opinion leaders so all that is something you really need to state there so there will be one section on intellectual property where they will ask you whether you own an ip if yes please give the details if no then have you done a prior art search have you done a good patent landscaping looked at patents in the similar area of research to understand where do you have the freedom to operate it shouldn't happen that whatever research you are doing is already done by someone and when you actually you know plan to uh, go for a patent you get to know that no you cannot file because it's already patented so there will be you know problems of patent infringement so to avoid that kindly get a prior art search done and uh, my colleague shalini just showed you uh, that uh, there are some upcoming ip uh, you know clinics which we are doing uh, where our uh, we have patent agents uh, in our team venture center with us so they will be uh, interacting with you one on one and helping you understand your case and giving you advice on uh, you know whether it can be patented or how or not so please avail that opportunity talk to them because this is a very useful document for all those who have not filed an ip and if they are trying to explain the patentable features it's better to get a prior art search done to get understanding of the freedom to operate okay so if there are any overlapping patents please mention those also next very important section is do you know how to do it so your work plan okay execution methodology and that you might have to divide into three milestones what will you complete in first six months next six months and last six months so first six months then in next six months so 12 months by the end of 12 months what will be completed and by the end of 18 months that when is the uh, grant ending what all will be completed so your milestone will be say designing of prototype but to achieve a milestone there will be a set of activities tasks or experiments which one needs to carry out okay so that one needs to list down in list properly and based on those you will also have some indicators to demonstrate that you have achieved those uh, or completed those activities successfully and then achieved this milestone so to design the prototype you might have to buy right equipment uh, hire people with right skill sets make the design first finalize the pcb uh, do the mechanical analysis on cad and then finally design simulation performance evaluation so then after the m1 completion there will be a review meeting for the big grantee with their big uh, partner okay like say if venture center is your partner so there will be a review meeting with experts and venture center team and they will check for the evidences of completion of all these based on that there will be disbursement of the tranche of money the 30% and then that will help you do your m2 milestone activities so here see milestone what we have done is we have designed the prototype after making the prototype we are testing it maybe for mechanical electronic testing and performance also so after all that testing milestone 3 is validation of the prototype so here we have made it quantitative we are saying we'll validate 20 units and at three centers so this provides me clarity that to make 20 units how much amount i need so that will reflect in my budget same way to test it at three centers i might have uh, you know got quotations from these three clinical centers so how much that cost is that might be included in the outsourcing budget in my big budget okay so one should always have a grant and deliverable or in fact for your own product process a target product or process profile right that whatever we are developing 
should be able to detect, say for this example, if we say if it, the POC device which we were developing should be able to detect blood glucose levels within two minutes with a limit of detection of say X milligram per ml at 95% sensitivity and 98% specificity. So some quality profile you should define and you should also be aware of the acceptance criteria or the market acceptance criteria so that whatever you are developing is accepted in the market. Next, we cannot is... hear you. Hello? Is that the case with everyone? No, we can hear you. No, we can hear you. Yeah, there yeah, is no, a problem. I'm drawing some lines also on the slides. Kindly avoid doing that. All okay. Yeah. So, uh, as I told you in the earlier slide that uh, based on successful completion of your milestones, there will be funds disbursement. So, once you get the grant and you sign the agreement with your BIG partner, you get 30%. Then after completing the first set of activities, 30%. Then next six months, 30%. And last after completion of project and submission of the final report. Yeah. So these are the different budget heads. So a kind request to kindly use the same budget heads and the terms and stick to the values here, which you say that there is a cap here, okay? So you cannot ask for more than 30% for equipment and mo not more than 30% for manpower. Also, there is a cap for travel IP, which you can see over here. And also, you can't pay scientific advisors or mentors from BIG project. So for this budget, for each uh, equipment or consumable or people you are hiring with certain skill sets you're asking, there should be a good justification. So where this equipment will be used and that experiment should be part of your work plan also. So there has to be a good alignment between what is your work plan what is your just justification to buy the right equipment or consumable or to get the right people to do it and complete that activity? Again, the team. So we have spoken a lot about credibility. Why you? There is good weightage for team. So team has to be very strong. Who is the project leader? How is there a biodata that matters? Uh, also, they'll see that you should have people with complementary skill sets from interdisciplinary areas to support that project. So if it is a clinical device, the one example which I showed you, so it's better that you have some clinicians as part of your team, or if you need to do some microbiology tests later, or some microbiology person, or if you want to make the device yourself, then someone who knows engineering. So people with different skill sets. So while you are describing team, Try to include their name, current affiliation, academic background, years of experience, expertise, and what will be their role in this BIG project, whether they be project leader, a technical person, co-PI, or a business mentor. So there'll be some people who are full-time with you, and then there'll be some advisors, consultants who are part-time. So these might be people with a rich experience uh, some might be from technical background, some might be from business or helping you raise more investment. So please include detailed information about all of them. Uh, budget. Uh, so we spoke about budget and this is about the evaluation. So uh, Shalini also had a slide. So what I want to focus here is, see the highest weightage is for novelty and team. So it has to be really strong. Then there are separate marks for each one of them, like whether it really looks like a technical feasible idea, can be scaled up, how important it is, what impact it will have, whether it has a commercialization angle or not, uh, who is proposing it, are there some serious barriers, okay, which cannot be addressed and it cannot be maybe, you know, make it to market, how the plan looks like, how serious it is. So this is not an additive score. That means out of 100, if you get more than 70, that me, uh, so you will qualify, no. Even if you fail in one of these criterias, the application can fail. So finally, to summarize, be very realistic. Include facts, 
don't talk in generalities. Be very specific. Whenever you're talking about whether it is comparative statement or your own work plan or what all has been done, use a language which is easy to understand, not very technical also so that people don't understand it. Choose a clear format. Don't write big, big, big essays. Keep it short, concise, specific. Refine it again and again. Research your funder. Try to understand what they want and then work on your proposal. Write a brief summary for each of the sections. Write four, five lines or just write the points which should be part of that section. So if I have to talk about novelty, then I should talk about these four or five features. Then frame sentences, okay? Propose a realistic budget. Try to match the budget with your work plan. Calculate the numbers correctly. Submit all the requested application materials. So as we saw in the online application, there is a concept note. Also this presentation, which I explained you, uh, you can also make a presentation and that can also be uploaded. You can have some letter of intent if you are applying as an individual from uh, us like Venture Center or any BIG partner that you can upload. You can upload some of the letters of or MOUs from your collaborators who will be further helping you in technology development. Okay, so upload all these documents also. Take your time. Usually well-written, well-thought proposals are better received. So don't work in hurry. Read the instructions again so that you don't miss out on anything. And very important is meeting the deadline. So it's never at 12 midnight. Uh, the deadline is 5.30 p.m. And um, we have a very bad experience that uh, on the last day, the server usually crashes and people face a lot of problems. So please don't wait till the last moment. Try to finish it a day before so that you, know, you meet the deadline. Because if you lose that deadline, then another six months you'll have to wait. Also, please keep it in mind that people may not get it in their first attempt, even second attempt, third attempt, but people still resubmit it. So when we are resubmitting, we have to make sure that we have understood clearly what was missing in the earlier application. So if it gets rejected also, you will receive an email with detailed comments that why the reviewers feel it cannot be accepted at this moment and they might advise to carry out some of the studies. So please carry out those studies, include that data, make it more stronger, and then apply next time. So with that, I would like to end and uh, uh, you can get in touch with Pallavi or Shalini. And those are our social media handles. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Smita. There are some questions in the chat box. So, Apur Bayan is asking, can we take salary from BIG? Yes, you can take salary from BIG. There's a limit on how much okay. one can draw per month. Uh, as per the DBT by uh, norms, it is 50,000 per person per month. Not more than that. Hello. Yes. Yes. Uh, um in the this thing budget you had said ki this um, uh, should be 30 percent this should be maximum up to this 15 percent uh, so considering your total grant that is 50 lakh rupees it is that 30 percent or whatever we are applying it is according to 30 percent 30 percent of the total amount you are asking it's total amount yeah like so 50 lakh you are giving so that is a 30 percent of that that way it is yes so if you are preparing a budget and asking for 50 lakhs then not more than 15 lakhs okay okay and uh, another thing is like uh, suppose uh, in in one one particular yeah, yeah i'm sharing we have got we have got some less uh, this thing uh, uh, amount can we compensate in the other head that no, that's why, see, there are caps, right? So you can't say if a cap of not more than 30%, say so 15 lakhs. So you can't ask 20 lakhs in equipment and say that I'll ask less in manpower. No. Okay, okay, okay. For manpower also, you had said 30%. 
what mm. exactly my power means i mean it's the salary to the to be paid to the workers so if you are hiring a jrf suppose a junior research fellow or a srf okay. who will actually work uh-huh. on your project carry out the experiments so you can pay to those people Uh, excuse me madam whether the mobility uh, aid for the disabled person uh, falls under the category of medical devices yes oh, thank you madam can you share the presentation so uh, as we said i think pallavi mentioned uh, we are right now live on uh, youtube okay so you can uh, maybe our team will share that link with you later all those who have attended today and you can go back to that youtube uh, uh, you know and um, again watch it so we may not be able to share the slides with you okay okay thank you madam your presentation was excellent thank you i thank you for a detailed note uh, i tried to fill in the feedback form but it is taking me to the same old registration form yes yes so i posted i posted the right link right now so can you try okay, this okay. one okay. yeah Yeah, sorry about you. that yeah no problem no problem yeah uh good evening ma'am hello yes go ahead yeah good evening ma'am uh my question to uh, madam uh, uh shalini madam uh regarding the waste management domain uh can a uh, can a plastic segregation machine mm-hmm. what we are developing it can be it come in the waste management domain right yes yes then we can apply in the waste management industrial automation sector right yes industrial uh, biotech ibt yes you okay. can apply to that thank you. yes yeah okay. thank you so there are a few more questions uh, uh, that were left unanswered from the beginning so how much of work or experimental data should be available uh, with us before applying the big grant so uh, we can't say how much but uh, say it should be convincing enough as a proof of concept that whatever you are proposing that concept will really work or you have at least tested it say 10 or 20% and maybe there are few more literature evidences so uh, it is case to case it will differ so they you might have done 10 different experiments but out of that two are the actual standard experiments everyone does to prove that particular concept so that is something we need to really decide that what should be really highlighted which results which will really uh, you know prove that okay we have been able to get that proof of concept correct okay there was another question uh, by karuna um, planning to explore herbal drugs which are already in use and not having enough scientific evidence to use by all will it come under this category so which category was uh, yes. that drugs uh, it will yeah. come yeah. under drugs category so there also you will have to justify uh, you know with a good scientific evidence that why are you trying to do it how this will be helpful so for which disease cases or which targets uh, what will be the bioactives from these herbals which are maybe reported to or what is their chemistry because of which it will be really you know useful for those kind of conditions so it will fall under drugs category and then uh, you will have to justify it that way uh, okay ma'am i asked this question actually uh, why i asked this like it's already exist in the market but uh, it doesn't have any proper evidence so uh, you said that we have to uh, launch a product right so that's why i asked whether it comes under this byrat scheme oh, okay so you are saying that maybe something is already used but the mechanism is not known you are trying to establish that yes yes because uh, there are many cancer drugs available uh, that has been used by traditional medicines but it is not used by all so uh, my research is based on that so that's why i'm asking but finally it will be useful for whom the research work which you will do suppose if you for cancer patients no but the product is already available right and it is being used for cancer only or for some other uh, disease uh, no it's it's used for cancer but only traditional medicines are using it uh it's not like uh, uh, our english medicines 
allopathy they are not allopathy using allopathy they are not using it okay. yeah 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 so in that so, case if you are trying to uh, you know uh, uh, do a research bridging a gap to, between uh, like uh, because uh, there are many many medicines that is curing cancer actually hmm so that's why i'm asking so then you know uh, this research will it lead to the further development that people might extract that particular bioactive from that herb which is actually responsible for that particular mechanism of action yeah, and yeah, we can do a it. more potent uh, or a more pure or single component herbal drug rather than whatever maybe right now people might be using a, a multi component extract something of that sort okay by yeah. that way we can show the uniqueness right yes but other than that can't it be used as such no otherwise it will be just a research okay We're trying to just find the mechanism of action okay ma'am no. thank you so much so how that once you have uh, you know you have that data how that data will be useful further for whom okay yeah i think okay, uh, namrata has raised her hand yeah I just had a query that all of the team members should be part of the same organization or we can have somebody from different organizations as an advisor or maybe our team members. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your advisors definitely will be from different organizations. Uh, but your key team members, maybe right now they are not part of your company. Uh but they might be also uh, you know advising you so that's that's not an issue but at least the pi co pi the core team should be from one organization okay ma'am uh, ma'am uh, ma uh, any uh, previous funding should be uh, disclosed in the proposal or uh, uh, this thing yes it has to be there's a question and one so should whether be it will be yeah. it will be advantageous for us or uh, yeah it will be an advantage because that proves your credibility that this has been earlier reviewed accepted okay. granted uh -huh. uh, funded so okay. that, and but make sure that whatever scope uh, was supported by uh, earlier funding you are not asking okay. for the same so there is no overlap in the scopes of big and the earlier uh, project so it it so ideally it should be continuation of whatever has been supported earlier so suppose people okay. get nidhi prayas nidhi eir and they have done some uh, you know some earlier work with that and then they show that they are continuing mm. the technology development with big okay okay uh, hello in yeah. our uh, advisors and team if the people are having a big grantee that they have mm. uh, availed the grant previously that will work no there is no problem no that's not a problem if they are just your advisors yeah, 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 I just wanted. Huh. That's all. Thank you. So there were further questions. So, uh, uh, dear panelists, my question is: in BIRAC website, there is guidelines for regeneration materials. It shows we need regulatory approvals in phase one, two, and three studies. Uh, but I think eighteen months is not enough for it. So, in your mm -hmm. opinion, how much the BIG scheme panel in charge expects from us? At least, uh, which. Uh, this much of improvement or milestones achieved in making an innovative regeneration material for TRL, how much uh, we will be able to achieve or your what's your opinion on it? That's what Satish is asking. Yeah, so Satish, that really depends on what is your current status of technology development. So if you are suppose uh, at a prototype stage where you have some initial prototype of this regenerative material or you have identified, done some experiments, then in next 18 months, uh, you might make some more prototypes, do some testing, maybe in vitro, uh, some animal testing required. You may not be able to even reach phase one or, uh, you know, co completing phase one is really, really uh, uh, a tough task. So you have to be realistic. That's what I said, that they don't expect you to complete uh, or reach phase three with BIG itself. They know that this... Uh, drug development especially takes a longer time. So uh, whatever can be actually completed properly within 18 months, you please include that only in your scope or work plan. 
so you need not be very very over ambitious and promise something which scientifically people know cannot be completed in that duration and with that much money also okay uh, so one other question was what are the charges vc takes for mentoring okay uh, so see big mentoring uh, uh, say first two three rounds we are doing for free and uh, for a deep tech mentoring if you want to be associated with us for a period of one year where you get uh, four to five mentoring sessions not only for big but for any other funding call also which you wish to apply for uh, so that uh, is covered under our ignition program which is a program for one year uh, where the charges are almost rupees thousand for a one year membership okay then uh, there was a question from shruti uh, individual willing to apply for big grant should essentially have any prior affiliation should they have any affiliation is her question mm. there needs to be more clarity right to this question like yeah so uh, maybe oh, she good evening i would say i would say is the individual thing uh, the thing is that uh, i mean if you are affiliated right now doing research and uh, there are people who have ideas but are not doing any job or they are not affiliated with any company or any research bodies so but they have an idea in their mind so is the idea going to be safeguard if they you know explain the idea to the speaker so the idea have the, the copyright for that person and if that person should be applying for this if, i guess the ideation is considered prl one level is considered for big grants so that's right yeah is. yeah you can apply you don't need to be affiliated to anybody to apply for big thank you yes uh, i have hi this is avinash can you hear yes. me yes avinash is the startup needed to be incubated at some incubation before applying the big no a startup if they have their own space to conduct the experiments uh, related to big validate the prototype they need not get incubated in an incubation center although it is mandatory for individuals who apply to have an loi uh, from the incubation center okay thank you yeah roshan you had a question uh, can we can we submit two separate applications like one for uh, a human and one for animal uh, with with two different uh, partners to to separate big application basically no no roshan uh, is the product yeah. same and you are saying uh, two different applications with two different scopes of animal studies and human studies yes yeah yeah the scope no, of no. work will be different no no don't do that okay okay hello this is satish anade yes uh, uh, we are a team of uh, professors from college hmm. so uh, we do our uh, poc etc in the college labs and workshop and facilities available hmm. uh, so is it mandatory that uh, we need a loi uh, from a college uh, from college uh, so if so the patent patent holder is college and we are the uh, first investigators okay later when you incorporate a company mm -hmm. then your company will have to license it from your organization okay College. okay yes all right Got right it. now uh, at the time of application this is fine okay all right Thank at the you. time of application you'll just need an LO noc uh, from your institute okay. yeah okay okay thank you so there's another question from arjit um uh, is space technology startup eligible for big if they are developing a biological payload Hello. yes smita please can you please repeat the question someone was talking i didn't get it. so yeah so is space technology startup eligible for big if they are developing a biological payload oh so i'm not very sure about this unless we discuss it in detail so maybe i'll request you if you can help me with a small paragraph with some more details on my email address i'll be able to comment on it 
so need to understand that what are Hello. you developing and how it will help in yeah uh, in uh, this thing team members also we can put bih grantee people no no problem no? your own a core team please don't put as advisors uh, you can put acha uh, team members i cannot put eh? see in team members also you have two types of team members there are core team members uh, who are part full time with you and then there are uh, advisors consultants who are part time so i am saying in as uh, advisors part time there could be someone who is mentoring you who is a big grantee okay the team members i should not put big grantee not full time hello yeah, yeah that's right no okay. please do not okay. put okay. big grantees as your team member will get disqualified so please don't okay. do that okay. okay akhil do you want to ask a question yeah uh... In the core team, uh, everyone need to be uh, like full time or rainy people can be uh, part time also. Can be part time also some of the people. Yeah, and one more thing, uh, see, we are an IoT device uh, manufacturing uh, startup basically, mm -hmm. primarily focused into agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. So we have couple of devices, but we our research need to be uh, done um, improved a lot. Like uh, uh, this is prediction and this is analyzing. We need to predict uh, improve our research. So uh, we can apply, right? There is no. Uh... Yeah, yeah. If you want to do uh, iterations to your whatever has been developed, yeah, improve it, refine it. You can apply. Yeah, and right now we are just a, uh, we developed a device and we have done some testings and we need to do more testings and we need to collect more data samples and more uh, improvisation and yeah, accuracy. Yeah, so that part. is uh, you say validation of your prototype or validation of your proof of concept. Okay, in the in that case, uh, our TR level starting level may not be in between one to uh, three, right? So, are we eligible? No, no. It will be say since you have done some initial research, you can say you are at TRL two, right? Okay. And once you validate it further, you might reach TRL three or four. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, um, Sharvari was asking if the. There's a template for the presentation of the application to BIG. There so is there, a... there is a template on their website. Mm -hmm. So you can check that on the byrac.nic.in under BIG. So there is a, uh, not for presentation, but there is an entire form that is there. So you'll understand what are the different sections in there. And then uh, somebody was uh, asking, they want to understand what kind of edge the evaluators look in the proposal. Since uh, BIG, as you mentioned, is quite competitive. Can you give a specific example of a successful proposal that got the grant because of this kind of edge? So it uh, really depends on whether uh, there's a good market, uh, whether the market is not that crowded. Uh, or there is real unmet need and no one has actually tried to develop something. It could be a very disruptive idea you're coming up with, or uh, it really looks very exciting and uh, will have a great impact. So there are different ways, but yes, these are some of the ways and uh, even the team, how strong it looks. So sometimes many of them uh, even get it uh, at an idea stage because the team is so strong and their earlier work their publications, area of research uh, is really strong. So they know that, okay, these people will be able to achieve. So case to case, it varies. Sometimes it's the unmet need which they have identified or the market, uh, the product, how they are making, the team or uh, the novel features in the product. So it differs from case to case. But these are some of the, you know, like in case of, uh, I think, uh, Two examples which Shalini showed, one was KB calls. So they were making colors using microbes, which no one had done earlier. And they were able to prove that, you know, they can make it, uh, they can scale it also, it's reproducible and can be used, say, in fabrics or some other applications. So something which was very unique, no one had done. So the idea itself was uh, a good one. And uh, they had, uh, you know, actually won a lot of awards before applying uh, like best table or some of the competitions. So there was a track record that this has been reviewed, accepted by the scientific fraternity and has been supported. So these are some of the examples. Yeah. 
I think Satish has raised his hand. Yeah, Satish can ask. Yeah. You. So, uh, so we are uh, we have conceptualized uh, applied for a patent, uh, which is published but not granted, which is for um, uh, deaf uh, persons, uh, particularly kids, uh, to learn sign language in their uh, mother tongue, in their local language. Hmm. Uh, so, th is this device, uh, you know, kind of fit into uh, the grant scheme? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, Akhil, do you have questions? question? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what are the special, uh, can you give any uh, special tips for hardware devices, uh, what are the startups who are in hardware devices? Like uh, what do we need to primarily focus more on? So if you're making a hardware device, then whether, you know, you have your design ready. Okay. So what are uh, uh, the novel features in the design with which you will be able to accomplish some of the claims or the performance? Then uh, if it is a hardware, the components, you might have to test each of the components or if it's already proven that they are known for that function. From where are you sourcing those components? How is its availability? Uh, each of them together will be uh, adding cost. So then uh, when you're putting it together, the product, whether it's working properly, you might have to test it for safety, mechanical testing, then the performance function testing. So that's how uh, all it is. And usually many a times now uh, to support that hardware, one also needs to develop a software, but that yep. can be done either simultaneously or later with some other grant also, if it is not possible within that budget. So with respect okay. to hardware, yeah, these are some of the questions. Okay. So for uh, IoT uh, devices, Akhil, you will have to yeah. also have the training data, you know, what is the kind of size you're looking at. Uh, for your sample particular sizes. use case, sample sizes. Yeah. What is the SN ratio that you're going to get? How are you going to tackle the interferences that may come from different sensors? So okay. if you have thought through those, uh, it will help. Uh, is, is it, are you going to, how are you going to calibrate it? Are they going to be customized sensors? What is the, you know, availability of those things? If you can think through that and, you know, where all you would, uh, in what all use cases will you test those uh, IoT devices, you know? Okay. We've thought uh, through that you, it will help. Yeah. Yeah. Can you help me? Like, uh, is it possible any individual man, like uh, gu guidance can be given uh, for us? Like, because I'm not based out in Pune. I'm from Hyderabad. So I may not be physically coming for your sessions, which you mentioned in the uh, previous slides. So uh, what are the, uh, what, in what way I can associate with you and get help from a uh, grant? Yeah, so what I do is I'll just paste the mentoring link. First, you take the uh, free mentoring that uh, is there from the BIG team so that we can, you know, guide you to the, uh, you know, if you want to take further deep tech mentoring from an expert of that area, then we can guide you to that. That could be uh, like an ignition program or something like that. That can be, uh, you know, we can see that. Okay, uh, you will paste the link in the chat. Yeah. Right? No. Yes, yes. And one yes. more question. See, for example, we make some clients. So for that clients, uh, right now we don't have any certified validation, like a certification for that clients. But through this client, uh, that are our approximate clients. So through this way, we are planning to, uh, with this grant, we are planning to uh, get certification for that. Is it okay? Through the client, you are planning to get the certification. Clients, clients, not uh, client, clients. Claims. For example, uh, yeah, claims, sorry, claims. Ah, okay. So, Smita, do you want to answer that question? Can you elaborate? Means, do you want to do some pilot trials? Yep. Actually, pilot trials we want to do. And with that pilot trials, the results uh, actually yeah. we have done in a, a small size of area. So, mm -hmm. but uh, we secured certain results. So, we want to test in in larger scale, la larger areas and different locations actually. Okay. Different geographical yes, so locations. You, you yeah. can apply. You yeah. can, you can do that. You can validate at two, three different sites, hmm. field okay. sites. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, because because we primarily focused into agriculture and that too in livestock sector, animal husbandry mm -hmm. uh, sector. So mm -hmm. in that sector, uh, region to region also, uh, uh, mm -hmm. like uh, environmental condition varies. So we need to, definitely we need to uh, look into regional wise also. Yes, possible. You can yeah. apply. Yeah, so as Smita said, well, mentoring is possible virtually. You don't have to be physically present here in Pune. So that link has been okay. pasted here by my colleague Siddhi. So you can just, uh, you know, book an appointment through that. And... Okay. 
we'll take yeah. it forward. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Google form link, right? If I'm not yeah. Wrong. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Does creating a new app based service uh, also fall under big is what Rishabh's question is? Yeah, so I have asked him that um, that app is for what application? Is it in healthcare or need to understand that? So are you it... here, Rishabh? You can unmute yourself. Healthcare or domain only. Ah, so then it will fall under digital health, right? Yes, ma'am. Ah, then you can. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Madam, as far as the uh, barrack big grant is concerned, the TRL 1, 2, TRL 5, these are the only TRLs to be considered or even 6, 7 will also do? No. Uh, so because if it is little late stage, then yeah. the BIRAC has uh, SIBRI, BIPP. Uh, in fact, the call is right now open till okay. 15th of May. Okay. okay. So sure. they would then suggest that, you know, since you are at a higher TRL, we recommend that why don't you apply for this? Okay. Or sometimes they even give uh, lateral entries. If the project is really very good, they yeah. directly, uh, you know, push the project to Sibri or BIPP. Okay. Thank you. I think there are no further questions. Uh... Hmm. Then I mean, you are free to write to us or get in touch with us uh, through WhatsApp and we, you know, or email, and we'll be happy to answer your queries and guide you through your BIG application. I want to sincerely thank all the collaborating partners uh, from VNIT, Dr. Abhay Kuthe, from RCB, Malvika uh, Garg, uh, from uh, Anna University, Sudha. Uh, thank you for joining. It has been a great pleasure to have you all. Uh, just hoping uh, Swapnil or someone from IIT Guwahati has joined and uh, from ICT uh, team, Padma ma'am, and uh, from Atal Incubation Center, uh, Amal Jyoti. Uh, we would thank Ananta Prasad uh, for publicizing this event and, you know, uh, making sure that it's reached to more uh, applicants, potential applicants. So, um, yeah, with this, I would like to thank. There's one last question here from Arjit. If it is possible to conduct online workshop for BIG grant writing, Smita. <laughs> sure, Arjit, we'll think about that. Yeah, we yeah. have a, a lot of requests for that. Maybe next time we'll try to do it online or hybrid at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Thank you all then. Have a good day. Bye-bye. And please remember to apply two, three days prior to the end date of 31st May. All the best. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.